be right out of the Chicago school. Maybe our next guest is also. He's David Quo. He's the director at a company that calls itself Motley Fool, which is uh, imaginative, to say the least. Uh, but he's been good enough to join us tonight to uh, actually argue that Gideon Osborne didn't go far enough. David, you're having a laugh, surely. George, can I first, good evening, George. Can I first of all say that uh, the reason why we're called the fool is because uh, the fool or the jester during uh, Shakespearean times was the only person who could tell the king the truth and not have his head cut off. And going back to your first question, do I believe, you know, that the cuts are severe enough? I don't think they are, and I think, you know, you know the reason why. Ultimately, I mean, if you're running a business, if you're running a country, you cannot spend more than you actually collect in terms of tax revenue. Well, you know very well that running a business and running a company are two different things. Running a business and running a country are two different things. Well, explain to me why it is different. Well, I mean, ultimately, uh, uh, if, you, if you took that point of view, you wouldn't have any state at all. You, 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 you could be like uh, Somalia and have no tax and no spend, no state of any kind, no fire engines, no police force, no hospitals, no schools, nothing. If you, if you were a business, you wouldn't do these things because they don't make money. You see, David... You cannot, the, you cannot uh, run a debt either, George. I mean, ultimately, you cannot spend but if you, more than what you collect... If in a terms country of doesn't... Uh, there is no country in the world, nor has there ever been a country in the world, that has no debt. Because you have to invest in order to make the country civilized enough so that capitalists like you can come along and run businesses without people pouring in your door and stealing all your wealth. If there was no state, no civilization, then it would be the law of the jungle. But you can have debt, George, but you cannot have debt that is close to the size of the economy itself. Well, that's we, not what we, you started out we, by saying. George, if you started not, out George, saying that, George, I would agree with you. We have not been running. We have not had a budget surplus for the last 10 years. We have the lowest level of debt which this country has had over the last 20 years in the last 200 years. We had a debt three times bigger in 1945 at the end of the Second World War. And I'm, I'll remind you, maybe you're too young to know, in that period when we had a level of debt three times bigger than we have now, we built a national health service, we built 300,000 council houses every year, and we built the welfare state that you're so happy about demolishing now. But we also had a high degree of savings during that time. So ultimately what, what was happening was that that debt was being financed by the people here in the UK. That is not happening today. Almost a third of our debt is actually being financed from people outside of the UK. So therefore, we are being held hostage to people outside. How did we get all this debt? A bigger pardon? How did the country run up this debt? Well, this is, this is a very good question. I mean, how have we actually sort of run up all of this debt? We've been running up all of this debt because over the last 10 years, we have been spending, as a country, five pounds for every four pounds fifty we collect in terms of taxes so, so it's therefore not, that it, extra it, 50p is being financed by debt that 50p is being financed by somebody outside it's being financed by the pension companies now if you carry on doing this it's nothing to do with the fact that we poured hundreds of billions of pounds into the saving of the private banks that, is, that, that only happened in the last three years, George. But that, I, I that, that that's, exactly, the, that's it, exactly how we reached this crisis point in the last 12 months, because the private banking sector, which you would have told me just three years ago, was some kind of golden uh, uh, calf, a graven image that we ought to worship, actually was uh, not just a paper tiger, but was a... a, a, a an accident waiting to happen, and when it happened, the poor taxpayer had to bail you all out. But George, we wouldn't have had to sort of take on this extra financing if the previous seven years we had a budget surplus, in which case you would have had money put to one side so that when there was a disaster like this, you wouldn't have to sort of go cap in hand to the rest of the world and say, lend me some more money. But why should we rescue you from the disaster? I am as not a banker, George. It. I, am, I am a consumer. I am, I am a citizen, just you're like a supporter. everyone else. No, you're a supporter of their system. And you've just described it as having been a disaster. Why should we pay for their disaster? 
Because, George, <laughs> these disasters happen, but what you have No, to they do don't happen. What do you mean they happen? These this was the most cataclysmic collapse of finance capital since 1929. These disasters don't happen as, a, as some kind of accident. They happened because greedy pigs had their, their, their uh, um, noses so deeply in a trough that were, that, that were fattened by million pound, two million pound, three million pound bonuses. They were living the life of Riley, and as you say, it turned into a disaster. The George, difference George, is, George. we are having to pay for the disaster. George, they, they, it, it happened, right? The reason why we have this huge amount of debt is because the Labour Party or the Labour government believed the line that boom and bust had been done and dusted, and we would never have another bust. So therefore, we continue to carry on spending money, believing that money was endless, that you could keep on borrowing money from the outside world and the economy would carry on growing. But as most intelligent people know, economies grow and shrink. So this is the shrinkage that should really have happened many years ago. But it never happened because we kept on fueling this good life that we had here, you know, with huge amounts of debt. So